Senator Vandepute, thank you for coming to KERA to talk with us about this very important election. Well, thank you for having me, Shelley. I think it's important for people who are asking for uh, Texans to vote for them that they need to be accessible and certainly need to be answerable to how they would stand on major issues affecting our state. Well, I wanted to start out by talking about the first television ad uh, for this fall season that your opponent, Dan Patrick, has released. Um, it's uh, a hard-hitting ad that takes aim at you over the issue of immigration, and he says in this ad that while ISIS terrorists are coming over the border potentially to kill Americans, that you are falsely attacking him to hide your failed record on immigration. How are you countering that? How will you counter that? Well, I was uh, really distressed to see that ad. It opens up with ISIS terrorists. And it's one more example of using the politics of fear and harsh rhetoric to hide uh, my opponent, Dan Patrick's, no agenda for border security. In fact, I have a plan for border security. The first thing you do is you listen to those local leaders, uh, elected leaders, law enforcement, the business community, and our faith-based leaders. And what they've asked for is help. But they've asked for help in the way that is the most efficient for taxpayers, but also gets the job done. They want more police, but they would like their own police departments, their sheriff's department, like Sheriff Lucio in Cameron County and Police Chief Rodriguez. And we Texans could do that. We could absolutely help them. These are people that know how to do that job, would get to the, 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 the criminals that would wanna sell our children drugs, or the vile crime of human trafficking, which I've always taken the lead on in, in, in state on those measures to get tough on those that would prey on humans. That and the, the type of support they'd need. I voted for every single budget item that DPS has asked for with border security. My opponent, Dan Patrick, can say he's uh, all about securing the border, but the fact of the matter is he voted against those funds. The tone of his ad is pretty harsh as it's directed towards you, but he did say a couple things that are true, and one is that you oppose putting the National Guard on the border. He thinks the National Guard on the border, Governor Perry's plan to send them down there was a good thing. You have some questions. Why, why is it not optimum to have the National Guard down on the border? Well, 34 years as a pharmacist uh, working across the prescription counter, I've learned to listen. And 23 years as a legislator, I've learned to listen first. And listening to those local law enforcement leaders along the border and the business leaders. What they wanted was not the National Guard. They wanted more law enforcement, but they wanted somebody who had the power to arrest. You see, our fine men and women in the National Guard will do their mission, but their mission prohibits them from arresting. So even if they do view someone and they're, they're, they're really in a uh, post that has as a lookout, they still have to call someone else. They have to call a sheriff or DPS or, or, or border security to come and arrest. What the, the border leaders wanted was somebody to arrest. Now we're spending $18 million a month and it's not sustainable. So you're saying so this is I'm a waste saying, of money. Uh, I'm saying that there is a better way to achieve the objective in a way that's respective of the taxpayers and of the wishes of the local leaders and actually do something. I mean, it's great to have those boots on the ground, but they can't arrest. And we know the McAllen Chamber of Commerce and those business leaders have asked Governor Perry to rescind his order. Why? Because it's harmful to their economy. We know Mexico is our number one trading partner, our borders to the south, $520 million a day. And the image of those uh, soldiers on the border makes it more difficult and it doesn't create any jobs. We could really get tough uh, on those crimes on border security, but doing it in a more efficient way of using sheriff's deputies, police officers, more DPS, more prosecution, and we could do that probably at half the cost. So I'm respectful of the local leaders who have asked for help, but they didn't ask for the National Guard and it is not sustainable for us to do this. It might play very well in other states, but it's costing way too much money and they can't arrest people. They can't arrest those that, are, that, that would do harm. So if you were Lieutenant Governor and you were one of the key leaders making a decision yes. on, on uh, this uh, expense, 
Would you withdraw the troops? Would you still keep the DPS down there? What would you do? Well, first of all, I would go to the leaders of the Senate and the House, uh, Speaker Strauss and the governor, and say, we need 500 more cadets in DPS. That means we have to fund that. And when we fund those cadets, that means we also have to fund more DPS uh, equipment, cars, everything. So if we want that presence to continue, which is warranted, we need at least 500 more. That means that we need to up those training classes. Second, we need to give grants to the local communities. We could do that immediately to those border sheriffs and to those police departments so that they can hire and train more that will be there that can do that immediately. That's the other thing we could do is help with prosecution in the DA's office. The plan to help them hire more DAs because the feds will take those high profile cases, but they leave the counties struggling uh, at the at the court system and they're clogged, we could help with that. So yes, my plan is uh, to make sure that we have what we need to secure the border, but that we do it in an efficient manner. Uh, my opponent has no plans. The other thing that he and his ad attacks you for, and he has in debates yes. and public forums as well, is the fact that you, you authored the DREAM Act, which allows undocumented students who've graduated from high school here in Texas to go to college here and pay in-state tuition as opposed to something more expensive. He said, uh, he has said that it promotes undocumented immigration and it's just wrong. How can you defend that to people in Texas who may think that undocumented people shouldn't be here, period? The Texas Dream Act was passed in 2001, so it's been working for 13 years. It was passed with only three or four dissenting votes out of 181 lawmakers, proudly signed by Governor Rick Perry. Chief uh, proponents for this were the Texas Association of Business, and I proudly sponsored the measure in the Senate. And what that really says is that students who have been brought to this country through no fault of their own have the privilege of paying in tuition the same as the students that they graduated in high school with but there is a penalty. You see, when people move here from out of state, they have to have a one-year residency before they're able to pay the in-state rate. For our students who have been brought here in younger years through no fault of their own, their families have to be here three years. And that's because they've been paying taxes into Texas for three years. Then we give them the privilege of paying the same amount as a Texas resident because they've already been here for three years. It's been working uh, and I can't imagine why someone would not give the opportunity to Texas students who have graduated here. Now, the way that my opponent describes this is there's one seat left at the University of Texas. He can't read. It's not about in-state admission. It's about in-state tuition. It's what you pay at the registrar's office. And the way that business people have viewed this is the opportunity for these children, these students, to continue their education. It's sound business practice, and I defend it. And other Republicans on this ballot with Dan Patrick have also supported the Texas Dream Act.